don't it's not that very high off the off the off the ground that was the other problem because we had a little parker gravity float uh 200 bush or so and uh he had also he had a he had a 930 case on the on the combine and he had a case 1170 1970 case 1170 on the grain wagon and and guess who's driving the the case 1170 me so my job during corn harvest was well let me explain he put put this auger wagon he engineered this you know he's an engineer you know the auger wagon all four wheels were in a line so it towed just fine i mean it was no problem to tow that thing around with that 930 tractor and the hitch was angled, so it's like a V, you know, the, the, it's kind of like that, see. And there was a brace in between that would hold it all in, in alignment, see. So he'd go along, and when he'd start to see corn up here, he'd, he'd, he'd reach up here and, and uh, pull this lever down, and it, it'd turn on the auger. And then when it, it got empty, you would flip that auger up. And, and this lever here, there's a dog clutch in behind the gearbox that would either engage the thread, the thresher, or disengage it. So, which you, you could disengage it, and then run just the uh, the auger. So you unload it without it thrashing around and making all that noise. So, those things were cool. I I was sad when he had to, when he sold that and got that uh, case case combine. I mean, the case combine was kind of cool too. Uh, 16, 60, 318 Chrysler caught it on fire once. That was interesting. Um, but, but anybody out there, if you got one of those in, in good shape with a good shape John Deere um, uh, two hundred five uh, corn head on it, call me. Or not? No, you can't call me. Email me. Use the email and call me. I'd like to talk to you because I think it would be absolutely. Freaking hilarious! Um, to put my little tractor on that and pick a little corn and take some pictures. You know, fifty-five or fifty-six uh, pull type and and a twenty-twelve fully option of tractor with a, a cab on it. I don't think that's ever been done, and I sure like to see it done. And anybody out there's got one and, and got access to one like mine, put the two together and take a picture, please. <laughs> that will satisfy me enough. Because I think that's hilarious. It, uh, it is. Anyway, back to where we was at. Um, yeah, he had a 930. He had a 930 on the combine. And then, uh, of course, living in Princeville, I went to Princeville High School. Well, all of, all of it, junior high, second on. Good teachers, good school. You know, the area is, is uh, big. Uh, you know, we've got uh, Apostolic Christian and uh, Baptist and the uh, Methodists and the uh, Lutherans. So it was, uh, you know, it's it's middle America. It's, yeah, it's flyover country. It's a deplorable country. Yeah, that's what it is. But I went to school. You know, you know, and I still remember a couple of teachers stick in my mind. Uh, math teacher, Miss Wooden. You have no idea how much you've uh, helped on the math because I went on and and, and later, uh, later on when I was working at, at, at L. R. Nelson's, which I'll get to in a minute. I mean, I I finished all the way through Cal three or whatever the top one was, which come in handy getting hired on Caterpillar, and I'll explain that in a minute. And Mr. House, love you, man. You were a big influence on the mechanical side. Between him and my dad, it, skills did you serve you well in life. Of course, when I was in high school, you got to have a car. So my grandmother had gotten Alzheimer's. She couldn't drive anymore. And the reason she couldn't drive, she parked it in a little, little lean-to barn they had out there. And there was a nice little dent right here in this corner where she hit the pole. And then when she backed out one time, she, she caught this corner here on the tree and, and pushed it in. And it was still runs and drives. But 
that was a unique car. It, it had manual steering, manual brakes, and air conditioning. 307 Chevy, two barrel. Had uh, 90-something thousand miles on it. Anybody want the car? Of course, my hand went up. I was 15 at the time. Or I think, yeah, my hand went up. And, of course, it was in Kansas, and so we had to drive it home. Well, Dad's driving on the way home, and, and uh, Mom's driving the, the car we had. And someday I'll get into what cars I rode around in when I was growing up. That's an interesting story, too. What, what, what cars my parents had. And... Um, Somewhere in Missouri, if I recall, he's driving along. He looks over, looks over down here on the passenger floorboard, and there's a big old rat looking up at him. <laughs> and he stomped on the brakes and pulled over and got out of that car. He said, "There's a rat in the car." Oh boy! So um, we chased the rat out of the car and continued on. When we got the car home and I took the back seat out, there was there was a big old rat nest under the back seat. So yeah, they was living in the car. But that gave the car its nickname, the Ratmobile. And my nickname in the high school was Barrel, because I was a big old round kid. So Barrel and his rat, rat rover, Ratmobile or Rat Rover. So yeah, best friend's name was Tim. 